and press, okay, now it works. I think I would just start reading out and then maybe he can sort in. What do you think? Okay, the Vocabularium Bruxellense is a little known example of medieval Latin lexicography. It has survived in a single manuscript dated to the 12th century and currently held at the Royal Library of Belgium in Brussels. In this paper, we present the TI conformant digital edition of the Vocabularium and the results of a quantitative study of its structure and content. In particular, we show how our edition with code approach can be employed to provide insight into historical dictionary making practices. First, a brief discussion of a number of issues related to the TI annotation is offered. We focus on challenges which arise due to the discrepancy between medieval and modern lexicographic techniques. For example, a single paragraph of a manuscript may contain multiple dictionary entries which are etymologically or semantically related to the headword. Medieval glossaries are also less consistent in their use of descriptive devices. For instance, the dictionary def definitions across the same work may greatly vary as to their form and content, and as such, they systematically require fine-grained annotation. Second, we present the TI publisher-based digital edition of the vocabularium. At the moment, the interface provides the interface of the TI publisher provides basic browsing and search functionalities, making the dictionary available to the general public for the first this is leaving me, okay. Thirdly, we demonstrate how a digital edition can be leveraged to enable a thorough quantitative analysis of historical dictionary making practices. In what we call edition with code approach, a Jupyter notebook is used to retrieve both structural and content information from the source files of the dictionary edition. The data are next processed, summarized, and visualized in order to facilitate further research. The results of analysis of almost 8,000 entries of the vocabularium show, for example, that half of the entries are relatively short, a number among them contain only one word, a one-word gloss, and only 55% of entries contain 15 or more tokens. Based on the statistic analysis of nearly 1,200 quotes, we were able to make a number of points concerning the function of quotations in medieval lexicographic works, which is hardly limited to attesting specific language use. We observe that quotations are not equally distributed across the dictionary, as they can be found in slightly more than 10% of the entries, whereas nearly 7,000 entries have no quotations at all. The quotes are usually relatively short with only 5% containing 10 or more words. Our analysis shows that the most quoted author is by a wide margin Virgil, followed by Horaz, Lucan, Juvenal, Ovid, Plautus and Terence. I'm sorry, they, these are the German pronunciations I, I hope you can identify. Uh, church fathers and medieval authors are seldom quoted. We have also discovered only 86 explicit Bible quotations so far. In that the systematic comparative analysis of the existing editions of the medieval glossaries might provide useful insight into the development of this important part of the medieval written production. So if, if you like, you can discuss about it a little bit. Do you have any comments or questions? I mean, we can discuss just entre nous, because I cannot answer much of that either. This is not a question, but for the other. But unfortunately, it cannot be answered. No. I mean, uh, I, I would like to know something about the, the degree of overlapping between the, the the lexical entries in this dictionary and those in the glossary of medieval Latin by Ducange, which is the, the, the reference for medieval Latin. Uh, so I would like to know how many new entries, new words are in this dictionary uh, and how many are overlapping uh, and, uh, and that's it. So, but 
uh, this the last part of the abstract where the author says that it's important to do comparative analysis. And the second question will be, uh, where, are, where are the data? Can I download somewhere the data? Because uh, I will need them in order to enrich uh, the Lemma Bank of my knowledge base. You should know right? You should know make that yeah. accessible. Jupyter Notebook is, yeah. No, he's, he's not, he's not there anymore. Yeah. Just me. <laughs> but it's interesting. I, I, I would, I have no idea. You might know better. I mean, how many, if you, if you make an edition of a new Latin text, it must be medieval. It's medieval, 12th century. I mean, we have these big medieval Latin dictionaries the, uh, from British sources and the Ducange and, and, you know. What do you think how much new words can be found, new lexemes, actually? I don't... ...made up around 46,000 words, excluding the onomasticon, which is another word, 20,000, more or less, from Flocellini. Uh, Around the new 60,000 are from the glossary of, of Tukange. And uh, there are some other 25,000 from the Neolatin word list of Hans Raminger. So, for instance, now we have this big list of 120,000 lemmas for Latin from different eras. And we still find new words, especially proper names. There is always some uh, Arnulfus that's, that comes out from, from some medieval texts. So uh, there are some, there is some literature about the fact that if you part a speech tag or lemmatize a, a medieval Latin text with a classical Latin morphological tagger and lemmatizer, the accuracy, the, the coverage drops if you don't use, for instance, the glossary for medieval Latin, but this is obvious. But these little dictionaries are very helpful because uh, sometimes they report some very peculiar lexical uh, items that are not found in the glossary or other in the glossary of Tukanjan or other resources. For instance, there is a nice uh, lexicon uh, of uh, Latin, the, la the lexicon Boemorum built here in Czech Republic that we just included in our collection of lemmas for Latin. And we added some uh, 12,000 new words that were not in the glossary, not in the Oxford Latin dictionary, not in the Georges, not in the Forcellini. So, you never know what you can find out there. So I will be very curious in knowing something about this, this dictionary. Um, I can only say I don't like it. <laughs> <It's> the, <laughs> and that is why I haven't worked with it. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of a Pre anybody knows better a pre-processed way when you write Python code or something and get results and you can write it in this notebook and it kind of uh, delivers directly the outcome and, and things like that. But I was always, I always like to use a, an editor to do that and then get the outcome. So I'm not the biggest fan, so I'm probably not the one to do um, um, uh, verbal uh, commercials about it. <laughs> Anybody else has some comment or some uh, some question? Okay, if not, we just have a five minute break and then we get to the next presentation. <laughs> yes. There was great. You search uh, in Google, you can find uh, um, abstract uh, by the same author and in this abstract is a given link to uh, glossaria.eu and in this glossaria.eu uh, is uh, three dictionaries electronic ones uh, one of them is this this what we're talking today about so uh, this uh, result is published and uh, available. So just, yeah. Thank you very much.
So five minute break and then we have the next presentation.